So after picking up the film May earlier this year and absolutely loving it, I instantly became fascinated with Angela Bettis as an actor and Lucky McKee as a director. Um, years ago, I did see his 2011 film, The Woman, uh, which was also really good. Uh, so I have been working kind of on watching all of Lucky McKee's films, and I decided to go next for Red from 2008. Like The Woman, Red was adapted from a Jack Ketchum novel, and if you're at all familiar with his writing, you know you're in for some heavy subject matter. And I've had Red on DVD for months now, just sitting next to my TV, uh, because, well, I've, I've been super hesitant to watch it. And why, you might ask? Uh, because of my history of working with animals has me very sensitive these days to any kind of animal, you know, related cruelty or suffering. I just can't fucking handle it anymore. Uh, even just the thought of it, it, I mean, it's literal trauma. And, I mean, this film is literally about an old man that loses his dog to some horrible, walking, trash pile humans. I, uh, I believe that dogs are one of the greatest gifts to humans, and, and most of us just don't fucking deserve them. I mean, you can keep your fancy cars or whatever other bullshit that people consider important. I'll, I'll take a dog over any of that. And what I said about the general premise of this film isn't a spoiler, really. I mean, it's literally on the back of the DVD box and, and in, in the one-sentence synopsis on IMDb. In addition to Lucky McKee, uh, Red is co-directed by... I'm gonna try to pronounce this. I think it maybe is an Icelandic name. Uh, Trigve Alistair Deason, uh, who I wasn't familiar with at all, uh, and it looks like he's mostly directed like, a TV series, uh, albeit some pretty well-regarded stuff. And the cast here is, is pretty good. You have Brian Cox as the lead, and I've always really liked him. You also have Kyle Gallner, Tom Sizemore, and Robert England, just to name a few. Reviews what I, from what I've seen uh, seem to be generally positive, not exactly overwhelmingly so, but like some people feel pretty strongly about it. The budget was fairly small at a, a estimated 2.5 million, but get this, it only grossed around 15,000 in ticket sales. It probably only played in select theaters, but still, yikes. So Avery Ludlow, played by Brian Cox, is doing one of his favorite things, which is fishing down at his favorite spot with his best friend, his 14-year-old dog named Red. When three teenagers show up, uh, one of them carrying a shotgun. The gun-carrying kid, who is clearly the biggest douchebag of the three, makes some small talk about hunting before he demands that Avery gives him his wallet. Avery says that he has about $30 in his truck, and uh, this upsets the kid who is expecting more from the robbery, and so he decides to shoot Red in order to punish Avery. The boys laugh about it as they leave, and this, of course, you know, throws Avery's world into disarray. Uh, Red was his best friend, kind of his only friend. And you soon learn that Red was actually a gift from Avery's wife not all that long before she died. Sound familiar? Let's keep in mind that this was six years before John Wick. Now, I have heard that Jack Ketchum's book was quite a bit different and, uh, you know, like a lot more intense. And I've actually never read a Jack Ketchum book, but uh, I have heard they're, you know, pretty great. Maybe someday I'll grab a few of them. Now, as far as the John Wick comparisons go, they pretty much end with the dog. Avery is an old man, and he doesn't want to kill these kids. He just wants them to be punished for what they did. He wants justice, but, like, legal justice. So if you wanted me to say that, you know, Brian Cox goes full Rambo on these dudes, which I admit would have been kind of cool, because, believe me, these kids are fucking dicks, but he doesn't. That said, I'll stop there so I don't spoil too much. I liked this movie. I mean, you get some good performances out of just about all of the actors, especially Brian Cox, but I didn't love it. I don't have a ton of, like, criticism necessarily. Uh, there is a part where Avery tells a story about how his older son murdered his wife and his younger son, which I imagine was probably in the book, but I don't think it really worked well for the movie. And I, I think I expected a little bit more emotion, a little bit more pain, a little bit more sadness, and it, don't get me wrong, it's there, but I think it could have been turned up just a little bit, but maybe that's me trying to reflect my own animal-related trauma. I felt for Avery, and I respect the way he handled himself. You know, if I was in, in his place, I probably would have made a lot of dangerous mistakes. He's a good man, and, you know, he just wants to make things right out of a horrible situation, and that's admirable. So for a score, I'm going to go ahead and give Red a 6 out of 10. It's good. I do recommend it. Uh, but for a similar story done much better, 
I'd actually recommend Pig from 2021 with Nicolas Cage. Uh, I might have to review that one soon. Uh, that is one of my favorite movies of the last five, ten years, easily. Uh, I just would have to get myself to watch it again, uh, which it, it's such a, an intensely emotional movie that um, that is going to be a, a tough thing for me to do. Uh, but that said, I only watched it once, so it could use a second watch. Anyways, I'm not here to talk about Pig. Check out Pig. It's amazing. Anyways, guys. We got any Jack Ketchum fans here? Do we, do we have any Lucky McKee fans here? Do we have any fans of, uh, what's his name? Uh, the other director of this film? Uh, sorry, I know I wrote it down here somewhere. And most importantly, do we have any fans of Red? Uh, I would like to hear your thoughts. Uh, do you think I was accurate? Do you think I was missing the mark? Um, either way, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's worth your time. And uh, I appreciate you guys. We will talk soon. Cheers.